on your mind. Praise God. I feel the hope something's good going to happen today. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Oh, my God. It feels, and it's Black History Month, too. Come on. Y'all should be good. Y'all should feel good about it. You should feel good about it. I said you should feel good about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let the rocks cry out for me. My Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He's been good to me. Y'all don't mind. I just have to praise him just a little bit. Because he's been so good. He's been so good. Hallelujah. I've seen enough rainy days to know that God shines all the time. Oh, my. Hallelujah. I just thank you, David. The praises of the Lord will continuously be in my mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. I, I can remember the bad days. Enough to appreciate the good days. My Lord. He raised us up just to see another day. It's good enough for me. But do something with these 24 hours. I don't know about you. Holly, don't you just give the Lord another hand clap on your white don't you? My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. Why don't you turn with me? I'm not going to have you standing on your feet for long. We're going to go to a familiar scripture. Let's go to my Lord. Jesus. My Lord. Let's go to the gospel according to John. Amen. Chapter 3. Amen. Verse 16. We're going to see what the Lord says with a familiar verse. The gospel according to John, chapter 3. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Somebody say gave. Gave his one and only son yes. that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal some say everlasting yes, life you may be seated if I can just on your way to your seat preach for a little while I'm not going to be before you on this cold day too long God's true love God's True love. This is an important scripture in the Bible. And a lot of us, if we grew up in the church, around the church, or near some church folk, heard somebody say to us, or recite to us, or make us even memorize in Sunday school this verse. But sometimes we hear it so often, it's easy to take for granted what Jesus was really trying to say. You see, this was a moment where Jesus was teaching Nicodemus. And in this moment, we find that Nicodemus was searching for some truths. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And so he had a certain traditional belief in who God and the Messiah was. And couldn't necessarily accept for face value at least, at least not at this moment, who Jesus really was. I'm going somewhere. And so Jesus had to go about some convincing. Now the thing I like about Jesus, he was a doer more than he was a talker. All right? If he loved you, he'd put his hands on you, he'd spend some time with you. He'd go over your house, you'd find him with your burial with someone. If you asked him to go, he would raise folks from the dead. He would be at weddings, Jesus was a Jesus of doing. Huh? But every now and again, if he thought it was important, he would do some convincing with the word. I hope somebody's still following me. And so we find that he's talking to dear Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, he says to Nicodemus a lot of things, but the most important part of this discourse with Nicodemus is in John 3, 16. Now the interesting thing when we read it in the King Version, there are many different versions of this scripture. I love the NIV, I love the Living Translation, but sometimes you have to go back to the old school, the old school's 
uh, uh, version. And what we find here in the King James is 16 in the first part of the clause of this sentence in the verse says, for God so loved. Now the interesting thing about so loved in the King James Version is that to say so loved, they are speaking Middle English. I hope somebody is staying with me. I know we like to speak broken English and common English and sometimes we like to speak standard English, but we're not always familiar with Middle English. So to say so loved, it doesn't mean a lot. Jesus is not saying that God the Father loved the world a lot. <laughs> He's saying so loved, it means in this way, he loved. So to say that I so did something is to say in this way I did it. He's saying in this way I loved the world. He's saying pay attention, Nicodemus, I'm going to teach you something about how God loves not that he loves us so much, but in this way, Nicodemus, pay attention. Because the Pharisees, you're so busy trying to understand God according to your legalism. Well, I'm going to get legal with you and show you specifically how God loves. Are you ready for this, Nicodemus? He loved the world in this way. See, you love the world in the way that you give things to your children. And you dote on your wife. And... You decide that you love your job so much you're going to give your boss your all. That's how you love the world. But God loved the world in this way. Nicodemus, and I want you to pay attention because I don't want you to get mixed up how God really loves. I want you to understand that God loves in a very specific way. God's ways are not your ways. He's not going to love you the way you think he's going to love you. He's a specific type of lover. Because if God is love, then the way he loves is the right way to love. So if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you and show you about how God loves, you're going to learn something about how you should love. That God in this way loved the world. Now let's get into it. Verse doesn't stop with pointing to the way. In order to understand the way God loves, we have to understand what God loves. God loves the world. And in this way, he loved the world. Now, this is important. God loves more than just the world. He created, how do we know, Pastor? Because he created more than just the world. He created the world, but the heavens were created before the world. So we're not all that God loves. He, we're not everything that God created. We have to be careful that we don't think that God is just always, as much as his hand is on us, God's got other things he's trying to love and have in order. So at the end of the day, God's love is not a spoiling love. God doesn't treat you like you're the only thing that there is. He treats you like you're the special thing that there is. But God's got a whole universe to hold up. He's got a plan for the universe. You're only a part of it. So when God so loves you, pay attention to how he really loves the world. Because he loves you in a way where he's not going to tarry with you all the time. He's not going to tolerate your foolishness forever. God's got a big universe to run. He's got plans for your life, yes, but they require that you fall into the way he loves you. Amen. Uh, that if you allow him to love you the right way, you'll get the benefits of his love. So pay attention to how he so loves you. Uh, that many times we pull away from God, we shy away from God. We think God has left us, that God is no longer with us. And the truth is we're no longer with God. God. We're not living in true understanding of how to get God's love. That God says, if you love me, you will obey me. Uh-oh. Now here's why we have to understand how God so loves. Because everything else in God's universe automatically obeys him. That he doesn't have to have this conversation with the trees. Amen. Jesus doesn't have to have a Nicodemus conversation with the stars. Amen. He doesn't have to have this Nicodemus conversation with the wind. They all obey God yes. <laughs> and are in God's order. Jesus. See, so that the world 
in the Greek term that Jesus is referring to is the cosmos. That is the word we get cosmos from when we talk about the universe, the order of things. In other words, Jesus is trying to say to Nicodemus, everything in God's universe is supposed to be decently and in order. And so God so loves the world, man, because man is a part of God's universe. But he's got to love us a certain way because we have a will about us that the rest of the universe doesn't have. Somebody's listening. So I got to have a conversation with mankind, with the cosmos. I got to get you back in order, humanity, that even the birds sing when I want them to sing. What's wrong? With you. What's wrong with you, mankind? Nicodemus, you opened up a good conversation that it can be recorded for all time of how God really loves. That, that everything else is uniquely made like man, but man has this free will. Nicodemus, are you listening? That God so loved. The cosmos. Now, cosmos just, just doesn't mean people in God's order. It means ordered people. It means those who are in families, churches, communities, marriages, friendships. Nicodemus, God so loves your family. He so loves this church. He so loves your relationship. He so loves your marriage. That God does what? He sends his only begotten son. Now, Nicodemus, why is that important? Because unlike any other relationships in God's universe, stars to stars and animals to animals and the sun to the moon and the day to the night, we have a tendency not to get along. Wow. That because of our sinful nature and our free will, that God has to send an intervener into the lives of men. Yeah. See, God doesn't break, he sent his son to break a fight between deer and between bears. He doesn't send his son to separate the day from the night. That was done in the firmament. But he sends his son Jesus because he loves us in a way that we actually have an intermediary and an intercessor. Yeah. Somebody to get in the middle of our cosmos and order us in a way that we can act according to everything else in God's universe. I hope you're listening that we are sometimes so stubborn, we are so selfish, we are so self-centered, we are so egotistical, we are so hurt. We are so jealous that we don't know really how to love. So God so loved in this way that he gave his only son. Now here's what's important about his only son. I'm about midway and we can get ready to go home. Is that, the, is that Jesus is, is God's begotten son. What does begotten mean? Begotten means... He made, molded, and shaped Jesus in his image. Now here's what's powerful about that as it pertains to God's love. God sent the image of himself to man to show us how to be man and how to be divine. Now, now what's important about that is until then, Mankind would look to the stars and think that God was this mysterious power to be worshipped, but not to really fully be understood. That God sent his begotten, the son of his image, his only image. Now that means that in all that God created, he sent in the man's form the total embodiment of his own character. Why? So that we could have a real living example. This is love. This is how God loves us. To send an example to us. 
So he's not going to send Jesus every Thursday night when you get in a fight with your friends. That's not the Jesus love. It's that he sends his son to give us the image of how we should act. Jesus, in other words, is not going to do the work for you. He's not going to mend your relationships by coming from the sky with a magic wand and making every circumstance better. Most problems in our lives are character problems. And God knows that what destroys families, what destroys the cosmos, what destroys churches, uh oh, what destroys relationships, what destroys marriages is having a lack of character. Lack of character doesn't allow us to fellowship with each other right. We don't have honesty and transparency and consistency in our relationships without the character of Christ. So when God loved us in this way, he didn't send a referee. He didn't send a rescuer. He sent an example to us. And so the begotten son of God is the image of God in, in human form to show us to live among us, to experience with us, to get down with us, to eat fish and bread with us, to bleed with us, to cry with us, to mourn with us, to reconcile relationships with us, to show true love one to another, to hang out with folks, to show them trades and skills, and to be with them on sleepless nights during storms, and to be at funerals and weddings, and to show folks how to treat children and women and to show folks how to have brotherly love one to another. This is how God, in this way, so did God love us. The important thing about this is it gives us a true Savior. Shows us that heaven is possible. That we are no longer to dwell up the stars. And to think of God as something so far and the godly and the divine is something so separate and so distant and so spooky and so scary that we have no right to commune. But Jesus is the type of love that God has sent to us to create a bridge between us and the world of God, the mind of God, and the plan of God. And as Christians, we inherit all three things. The world of God, the mind of God, and the plan of God. That in other words, there's a home in heaven. There's a way God wants us to act in his mind. And there's a purpose to this living at the end. That we have a hope that is built on. God's promises, God's commands. And God's divine place for us to dwell. That in the end when all the materials of life. When your health fails you. When friendships destroy and disintegrate. When churches fold and when your job doesn't treat you right. There is Jesus reminding you of the home of God. The mind of God and the plan of God to sustain you. When nothing else does. When everything fails. When things fall apart, when life feels rotten, there's the home of God, I, I feel it. There's the mind of God, and there's the purpose of God. In this way, God so loved the world that he's not going to give you candies and cookies. He's not always going to give you promotions and titles. But you have a heavenly home. A right to know God's character and a purpose for living. Yeah. That our riches are built on that. Those are the substance of God's love. Now, the problem is, for a lot of us, that's not enough. We are not satisfied to have a home in God. A mind of God. And a plan of God. We, we, we value other things. Our brokenness and our trauma has us fixed on what we didn't get. And the thing that you didn't get will never compare to what God has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what God has in store for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Yes. You may better make sure on my way to my seat that you're not focused and fixated 
on what you didn't get in life. It is too small, yes. minuscule, and unimportant to think about, to imagine, and to hope for when God's got way more in store for you in Jesus Christ. Just the home and glory. I'm almost done. Look, look, look. Even if I didn't have the mind, of, even if I'm just back crazy, uh -huh. I, and didn't think that God had too much planned for me here, well. just to have a home in glory, yes. I might as well sit down. Just to have a home in all that I've been through. Yes. <laughs> Looky here. All that I've endured, come on. The things I've been told to, I can't speak for you, have been through to have a home in glory. Uh -huh. Oh my, that's enough. Yes. If I never fully get if I'm just so crazy that I don't get it. Uh -huh. But that, look, if I'm the thief on the cross next to Jesus, I that did not one thing for God. I don't understand the mind of God. I don't understand the plan of God. But to know I got a home in glory. Yes. Come on. My Lord, God so loved us that he gave to the thief on the very first day of the rest of his life. Yes. Huh? Yes. Saved for seconds. And Jesus said today, today. not tomorrow, today, today. You, will. you will. I don't care what you've done. Some of us have been slept with so many. We have wasted all of our inheritance. Yes. Been the evilest, worst folks on earth. Family can't stand you. Friends disowned you. Can't keep a boss. But God knows that he so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe. All you have to do is believe. Some of you think you got to do sacraments. You got to know the Lord's Prayer. You got to have been in church for 30 years. But God so loved that all you got to do is believe. Don't overcomplicate it. Make it plain. All you have to do is believe. God does not care the degrees you got. How much time you spent in church.
just feel like a Sunday morning message. And God's going to make it all right. Huh? It's going to be all right. It may not be okay. But it's going to be all right. Wait till after a while. You'll understand it better. By and by. Don't jump off the boat. You stay on. Not a soul be lost. Paul said, some made it to shore on the slim spars, the planks, and others on the strength of their stride. Come on. But they all made it on, didn't they? <laughs> they all made it to shore. Ah. Don't be mad at the one that got to hang on a little bit. Somebody going to have to hang on to your little bit. Just hang on. Somebody looks stronger than you. That's all right. Together we gonna get there. Huh? Don't despise the one that got to hold on a little. I've had to hold on to somebody's prayer. Huh? Somebody had to drag me out to church sometimes. Huh? But guess what? Whether you swim it on your own stride or you got to hold on. Jesus is on this way. Why don't you give God a hand clap? Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Somebody's on Facebook right now. Don't give up. It's, it's not death. It's just a condition. Somebody right now needs to hear this on Facebook. I feel it. God has got you. Don't give up, whatever that is. Somebody's got a thyroid problem and it's been messing up. God's got you. Don't give up. God's in control. He so loved the world. He's not going to leave you hanging. My Lord, it's just a condition. It's not a curse. It's just a condition. It's not a curse. I'm up. It's just a condition. He's going to run to speak to your illness. It's not a curse. It's just a condition. And like a cold, I can take it off. And be free of it. It's just a condition. Learn to speak to your illness. And make it obey the command of God. You don't define the illness. You don't define the condition. You don't define me. I am defined by being a child of God. Speak to me. Oh my. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Speak to your issues. God is in control. God's got the last word. God's going to make it right after a while. Have faith, church. Believe what God said. And if he doesn't tell you anything new, do what God told you to do last. Huh? Hold on to his promise. Stand on your feet. Praise God. Praise God. God. God so loved, and this way I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That in the midst.